Marco says, Hey Demon Mama, I forgot. Which MMOs have you played and do you recommend any? I got into Final Fantasy XIV recently and have been wondering about other games too. Okay, let me think. I have played EverQuest, City of Heroes, City of Villains. Um, they're kind of, they're not exactly the same game, but they're kind of the same game. Um, World of Warcraft, um, Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2, RuneScape, uh, uh, what was it called? Jade Empire? I think it was called Jade Empire or something. Um, Black Desert Online, um, Final Fantasy fourteen. Have I played any others? I think that's all of them. So I've played like... Oh, wait. Sorry, I did forget. Final Fantasy XI. I played that one too. Um, I played Final Fantasy XI. Have I played any others? Are there any other MMOs that I've played? I'm trying to remember if there's any others that I've played. I might have missed some. Um, oh, I did play... I played Lord of the Rings Online in the beta. So I never really fully did it. Let me explain my thoughts about MMOs. I've been asked by chat, uh, I've played a lot of MMOs in my life, and I've been, cha I've been asked by chat if I recommend any of them. And I have a hard time saying yes. I have had a lot of fun with MMOs at various points in my life. Um, World of Warcraft especially, um, because in World of Warcraft I got involved in very high level um, rating, which I found really um, fun in a very unique way. There is something really cool about participating in an event that takes like dozens of people to accomplish and being able to accomplish it together through coordination. I, I genuinely think that's really cool. I think it's awesome to get to know and master like your role in something like that. Uh, and also to be able to understand other people's roles so you can synergize with them. Um, there's something very cool about that. Um, but it's also a fairly rare experience, even in the MMO world. Um, if you are a serious MMO raider, most of your time is not going to be spent um, actually doing those raids or even practicing for those raids. A lot of your time, thank you very, very much, by the way. Um, a lot of your time is going to be spent basically preparing for, grinding up, uh, uh, doing a bunch of other stuff. And as a result, um, you waste a lot of time. And most of that stuff is not very fun. In almost every MMO that I've played, that's the case. Um, and if it's, if the, and there's a, there's a, thin line that has to be walked by MMOs because um, the opposite problem can happen where it, like like if they make the if they make the raids really hard because it's an MMO that's like a subscription service that wants you to play a whole bunch and it needs to have a lot of stuff for you to, to, to uh, be willing to commit to spending a lot of time and expertise on it if they're that level of difficulty, because it's an MMO, it's going to take a whole bunch of other time to even prep for it, and there's going to be a bunch of other extraneous stuff that you have to do that often is just terrible. And if it's too easy, then there's no point to coordinate, and it doesn't matter because you can face roll it with a bunch of random people. You just press a button, you go in, you automatically win, and treasure appears in your pocket, which is no fun. Or at least it's not fun for me. So, um... I've had, I've had a lot of fun with various MMOs, and I've played a lot of them, but I don't know if, like, I don't know if I think that they're, like, the, I don't know. There's something about the MMO format that just feels wrong. Um, every MMO that I've played becomes a gigantic time sink, which can lead to a lot of negative feelings. It can also just eat up a lot of your life, and it can also cost a lot of money. Um, and while I do think there are good things that can come from it, most MMOs out there right now are not in particularly strong positions. And this is because as the product goes on, every single, the gaming companies that run these products need to find more and more ways to squeeze the people for money so that they can continue to report profits, which means that all MMOs have a tendency towards, uh, becoming horrible and terrible and 
encouraging addictive behavior. Every single MMO I've ever played has been full of problems like this. W World of Warcraft is like one of the worst where they just have, there's no principles to the design anymore. They straight up like, they, they have, to, at this point of the game, they have basically removed everything cool that you would get except for achievement, like an actual little achievement badge from doing accomplishments in the game. They've put cooler stuff in the real money shop because they need to make it more profitable. The MMO as a format has this tendency towards addiction mechanics and, and toxicity that I just, I don't know. I don't think that I can recommend most MMOs for that reason. I've had, there's so much magical moments that I've had in World of Warcraft that I look at and I go, wow, that was amazing. Oh, I forgot another MMO that I've played, Warframe. And you wanna talk about a game that is completely eclipsed by its desperate need for monetization? Warframe is right there. Oh my God. I, I can't believe I didn't I didn't even think of Warframe. Um, It's just all of them. They're all like this. Um. It's, it's bad. And I love video games. And one thing that I hate is that video games are so limited as a medium. And also one thing that I hate is that video games encourage, uh, uh, through their design, they encourage gamers to be worse people. And that makes me sad. Because uh, MMOs are like a great example of this, but an, but an even perhaps an even more like acute example of this is MOBAs. Uh, MOBAs are a game type that is entirely eclipsed by the aggressive need to turn everyone into a addict, and that's terrible. It's terrible for you, and it means that um, the more that you love, uh, uh, and some of these games are good. Don't get me wrong. League of Legends has a lot of amazing stuff going on in it, okay? But the more that you get into League of Legends, the less that you're able to appreciate other things. You can't appreciate amazing pieces of art that appear in the gaming world because if you the without abandoning League of Legends and you're invested in League of Legends because everything in the game reinforces addiction mechanics. So they get you with this FOMO. They get you with the l loot boxes. They get you with the account stuff. They get you with the seasonal shit. And they load you up with all this stuff that locks you further and further into the game um, and discourages you from going and doing other things, going and seeing uh, even within the gaming world. I'm not even talking about beyond gaming but it discourages you from engaging with other um, other games that are out there that are amazing. And uh, I think that MMOs have this problem too, where they want to become your entire life. All of them do. And it makes sense if you think about it from the design, from the approach to the design. And so I don't really recommend MMOs because there's so many other games games i mean yes there is a there are certain things in mmos that aren't really replicated elsewhere within gaming which is unfortunate by the way um uh the the raid feeling like i said that one at the beginning of like getting together with like 25 people or whatever and all sitting down and coordinating and executing is an awesome feeling and you don't really get that in many other places in gaming at all. You have to go outside of gaming to, you know, sports or, you know, real world endeavors of some sort in order to engage in that on a regular basis. And obviously there's complications with, with all kinds of things like that. Everything you get involved in has its risks and, you know, MMOs are fairly low risk on that front. But, um, for that one fantasy, you have to pay a huge price. And they're going to, the games continually encourage you to spend more and more and more time in it. And some of it is fun. A lot of it isn't. It starts to get hard after a while to tell the difference between what's fun and what is something that you're doing to get to something that's fun, which is, I hate that feeling. I hate, like, when I play a game, I want to be like, oh man, this is really cool. This is engaging me. Even if it's something that's hard or that goes, that kind of is kind of frustrating me because I'm struggling with a challenge. It's a very different feeling than the sort of like horrible, checked out, 
all right, yeah, I gotta go do like 16 quests to be able to get to the next zone type stuff that you encounter in MMOs. And the more you play an MMO, the more it starts to feel like all of the fun is being mushed together with lots and lots of unfun until you can't really tell whether you're actually enjoying yourself or not anymore. And that sucks. So, uh, yeah, it, it sucks a lot. And there's, there's things that good that can come from MMOs. Like, I mean, I've made friends, long-term friends through MMOs in guilds, and that's fun and exciting. But it's, but of course, that's not the only way to make friends. It's just one potential way. And I've also, uh, found myself in a remarkable amount of, uh, you know, I don't know, uncomfortable or miserable situations when it comes to the social experiences that you have in MMOs. Like I, as, as a quick, a quick example in world of Warcraft, they introduced this system called mythic rating, which is a weekly system. Every week your key restarts and it, and you get a new key that's based on the highest thing that you accomplished the week before, which means there's an incredible, and, and from that key, you get a treasure chest, which contains randomized rewards that are better the higher you achieve. And what this means is that there's a constant pressure in basically everyone in the game, but especially among raiders, to push and grind the absolute hell out of these dungeons that are not fun after the first two or three times that you've done them. There's no more fun to be had in these dungeons anymore. And um, you gotta do them hundreds of times every single week, not, not hundreds of times a week, but hundreds of times over the course of a season of the game, you're going to do them multiple times over and over again every week. There's lots of ways for it to go wrong. If anybody fucks up, it's like a huge time sink and you're, and, and you know, you might not get that key that you want, which puts you back on everything else. It's just, they're all designed in such terrible ways because the fundamental thing that they want you to do is spend as much money as possible for as long as possible on a game. The MMO format just trends towards toxic game design in a way that I can't recommend to people. And I'm not saying you can't have any fun. I just, I don't really spend any time recommending MMOs to anybody because why would I, if I wanted to tell people about like an amazing and cool, unique social experiment type game, I would tell them to go play Death Stranding. I would tell them to play, uh, Dark Souls online, any of the Dark Souls 3 online, you know, or hell, even Dark Souls 2 online. There's still tons of people playing Dark Souls 2 online or Elden Ring online. Um, you know, these games have a lot of really fun and, and cool stuff. Uh, and they're way better than the experiences you're going to have in most MMOs. And I don't have to worry about, you know, giving somebody a product that's going to manipulate them. It's the same reason why I don't recommend MOBAs or uh, Battle Pass games anymore. Um, I just don't do it. Um, there's just, I can't, I can't imagine recommending somebody go into something, uh, you know, a product that is constantly manipulating you and they are, uh, and it sucks. Um, but yeah, that's basically my feeling about MMOs overall. Um, they, they, there's magic buried inside of them, but their fundamental concept in, in our current gaming industry leads to them having unbelievably toxic design. That means I just don't, I don't generally feel comfortable recommending people play MMOs. Um, there's so many games I would love to tell you about. And I, and I do my channel, obviously, if you watch my channel, you know, I'm constantly telling people about games that move me games that I think are artistic experiences that you got to go experience. And I know this from personal experience. Um, less with MMOs and more with MOBAs, that it's very, very easy uh, to enjoy a lot, like the core gameplay of a game, and to slowly get sucked into the point where you where you default to playing that game instead of going and checking out other things, and then you are just living a worse life than you possibly could. When I was still playing League of Legends, I missed out on so many amazing games that would have made my life better and made me feel better in lieu of chasing a fantasy that has been, you know, manipulatively sold to me by the game. It's just how it is, I think. So... Um, there's good, there's good games out there. There's plenty of things I'll praise about 
basically every MMO that I've played. And in fact, to just show this, just to prove to you that I'm not making that up, World of Warcraft has some of the most um, interesting uh, uh, story design of, of any MMO. It's incredibly fun. Uh, obviously, at this point, there's a lot of weird areas in it, but at one point, it was legitimately ridiculously fun to just solo through the game, just enjoying the story um, and having fun with it. It was very, uh, very funny writing, very, uh, uh, you know, interesting fantasy world that had a ton of characters that you just wanted to know more about. Um, and that's awesome. Uh, Final Fantasy has a uh, really, really awesome basic raid design. They really took their raid design to the next level. I love the fact that their raids are so communicative that you can learn the raid from playing the raid instead of having to install like random raid tools that tell you what to do. You can actually just observe what's happening because everything is so clearly marked for the most part. There's a few exceptions, but for the most part. Um, City of Heroes... Uh, well, okay, City of Heroes is very old, but uh, back in the day, um, City of Heroes was on some wild shit, okay? Uh, and when, at their peak, City of Heroes was doing so much weird stuff that it was a wonderful experience to play City of Heroes. Um, they didn't have like amazingly well-designed raids, but they had these crazy zones and they had an incredibly in-depth story. And in addition, you got a comic book with your subscription. So there was like characters in the world that you would be following and doing missions with. And then that month you'd get a comic book about those characters, which was really amazing. Um, so there's just a couple examples offhand of, uh, of some good things that I think exist. And at the end of the day, the games are still loaded with manipulative mechanics. So all that stuff comes with a really big cost. So I just can't recommend them. Anyway, if you want to hear more stuff about me talking about games that I love, about me criticizing games that I hate and love, uh, hit subscribe down below. Make sure you can hear the signal.